Hey guys, it's Pikachu. Thanks so much for coming back to my channel. Today I'm going to do an in-depth guide on when to summon the Great Dragon. So the Great Dragon is the dragon that pops up after your team kills the Dark Slayer. Many of you may think that this is just a dragon and you should summon it anywhere. Um, and of course, many of you know so much about how to summon the dragon. Whatever the case, this video today will uh, be a guide on factors to consider when deciding where and when to summon this dragon. So this video is going to be an in-depth look at when to summon the drake. The drake can be a powerful tool to push down towers, to force enemies to take unfavorable fights and poke, and to convert these advantages into big gold leads. However, it could also be absolutely useless and become a minion that the enemy team clears for 90 gold each for all of their team members. To prevent the latter from happening, here's a guide on a series of conditions that you should really consider to, before summoning um, the dragon in order to maximize its potential. Now, as a quick disclaimer, I just want to say that AOV is a very fast-paced game, so <laughs> don't spend too long making these decisions. But these are factors that you should definitely have um, on the back of your mind. Now, the Drake can be summoned in two ways. One is a team fighting Drake, or two, a split pushing Drake. A team fighting Drake is when the Drake is summoned behind a group of five heroes as a means to either get free push as the Drake can attack the tower from out of range. A team fighting Drake is almost always summoned down mid if the enemy inhibitor mid tower is still up because breaking the mid inhibitor tower is always the first priority. A split pushing drake is when someone summons the drake alongside a wave while leaving that wave by itself to push. The split pushing drake causes a dilemma for the enemy team if done properly because they either have to send someone to clear the splitting drake, which creates a window for the other team to hold a 5v4 team by advantage, or risk the drake taking multiple towers. It is usually summoned either top or bot lane, depending on which towers are alive, while the summoning team pushes the other two waves. That being said, where the drake should be summoned depends on two main factors. One, your team's heroes, enemy heroes, and two, the game state. To start off with your team heroes, there are some heroes that naturally synergize incredibly well with team fighting Drake and put incredible pressure on the enemy opponents trying to contest the Drake push. For example, if you walk up too far, Grok can hook a crucial member and win the game. A general list of heroes that are usually played are Morad, Zip, Elsu, Iggy, Violet, and they all have a kit that synergizes with a team fighting Drake. Beyond intrinsic synergies, you can also consider your team composition. The more long range and poke you have, the more devastating a team fighting Drake is. The ADC in the mid laner always weighs more, so even if the jungler has short range, as long as the ADC and the mid laner have long range, then the team is considered long range. Consider this team composition of Yorn or Brunhilda as the ADC, Dirac or Raz as mid, and Mina or Grok as support. In this team composition, the enemy team can't clear the drake without taking a massive amount of damage, so you'll most likely be able to get towers easily. Now, when should you summon a split pushing drake? Well. When you have short range and low poke damage, your team usually has high mobility potential. If you were to simply try to group and fight, the enemies can easily also group and use their tower as protection to do significant damage to the drake without leaving your team much opportunities to engage. Consider this common team composition with Valheim or Kaefeni as ADC, Vera or Alistair as mid, and Aoi, Nakroth, or Florentino as the jungler. If the enemy team's tanks aren't complete idiots, 
They can step up to stop the minions from hitting the tower, while the enemy ADC and mage simply hits the wave from a safe distance. Therefore, the smarter decision is to utilize the split pushing dragon and use the pressure generated with a strong pushing lane to set up traps of unequal numbers across the map. These same heroes can easily clear the other lanes or proxy the waves and then play around vision such as three people hiding in bushes in the jungle to use the dragon as a distraction to, p to pick enemies off. So I'll quickly explain what proxying the wave means. So that simply means to clear the wave before the wave reaches an obvious location on the map, such as immediately when the wave leaves the enemy tower, when a high mobility hero such as Irie, Aoi, or Nakroth goes and clears that wave immediately after it leaves the enemy tower. In high elo games, you see high mobility champions always go to proxy the wave because it makes a huge difference on the overall state of the game and in fact, if you proxy the waves, even if your whole team is killed, most of the time the enemies cannot capitalize on that and push towers or end the game, so it does make a huge impact on the game. Now, back to my explanation about when to summon the drake. Another factor you should consider is the state of the game. So, the state of the game consists of 1. The gold differential 2. Whether your team is losing or winning in towers and 3. Your teammates The gold differential is highly relevant to where you summon the dragon because if you're ahead by a substantial amount of gold, for example 1000 to 2000 gold, then your goal is to wipe out as many heroes as possible so you can push down as many towers as possible. Therefore, it's always more desirable to use a drake teamfight style and force the enemy to show themselves in a spot. If your team is unfortunately behind and somehow managed to sneak the slayer or kill enough enemies to secure the slayer, then a split pushing dragon is probably a better choice to help you secure more map control. The second factor is towers. Sometimes there's a situation where there's only one inhibitor tower left in a lane and the other lanes have two or more towers in each lane which makes it the most desirable option to summon the dragon in the lane with only one tower left regardless of the situation. Now the last factor is your teammates. Are they relatively cooperative? Would they actually rally? If your teammates are not cooperative, then it might always be best to use a split pushing drake that's giving you time to find more picks or to bait out an enemy hero trying to clear the dragon by themselves. You can even walk up to a tower and then summon the drake and in this case maximize the damage done to turrets by the drake. Lastly, I'd just like to quickly mention uh, ways that you should never summon the drake. One. Never summon the drake in a lane where the enemy minions are already super minions because that will not only not help you push very much, it will simply waste the drake. Secondly, don't- <laughs> don't- <laughs> sorry I'm laughing. Please don't summon the drake in the dark slayer pit um, <coughs> right after you kill it. That is not good. <laughs> But in all seriousness, please don't summon it in the Dark Slayer pit right when you uh, obtain the Slayer unless there is currently a fight going on and you're trying to use the Drake as an immediate team fighting Drake so that um, the Drake helps your team do a little bit more damage to the enemies because yes, the Drake does target the enemy heroes as well. Additionally, if you're trying to summon the drake and rally around it to push towers with the drake, make sure you don't summon the drake in a lane where there are no minions or the minions have just about uh, all died. Because then even if the drake can reach the towers, your teammates can't reach the towers, they can't hit the towers because you don't have any minions left. So if you plan to push towers with the drake, if you summon it in a lane where there are no minions left, you wouldn't be able to do that. Finally, 
please, please, please do not um, walk up <laughs> to five enemies, summon the drake without any minions, and then run away. <laughs> Um, in this way, you're literally just feeding the Jake to the enemies as an additional source of gold. So, that being said, <clears throat> this was the in-depth guide and tutorial on how and when to summon the Drake. The Drake is also known as the Great Dragon, aka the Dark Slayer Dragon. So, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, I know that it came highly requested from a, uh, a couple of you. So um, if you have any more questions regarding this topic, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section and make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much and I'm losing my voice <coughs> because I haven't fully recovered yet um, from my throat situation. So I am going to stop this recording here, but uh, I'll see you guys next time.